Hey guys, we are back on the 440 project and tonight's task is going to be putting the lifters in the bores and checking that they are operating smoothly and rotating properly. All right, well the first thing we'll go over is the camshaft. It is temporarily installed, not permanently. Uh, this is just to check those lifters. So what I've done is I've put the cam in and I've left all the cam lobes dry. So we have no lube on any of this, these lobes, only on the bearing journals, only where the cam's going to ride in the bearings. So we're doing this on purpose. And the reason for this check is to see if the cam with the lifter just under its own weight will rotate properly. Uh, of course, everyone's heard about cams getting wiped out, rounded lobes, things like that. And whether it's the lifters getting trashed or whether it's the cam uh, getting flat, we want to avoid that. So we're gonna do as many of the checks as we can. In fact, these are Hughes high performance lifters and they, they basically say this is a necessary step. So I'm gonna go through that and uh, we'll walk through it together. So uh, first thing again, the cam is in, only the bearing journals are lubed and I've just made this simple tool so that I can hold the cam and have some leverage. Uh, there's probably one you could buy, but really a bolt that's the same threads as your cam bolt will work fine. Just something you can have some leverage. Now, you may notice that the cam will walk into the engine. Um, like you see there, it'll keep going another half of an inch. And what we'll have to do is put the top sprocket from the timing gear set on here to keep it riding right where we want it. That way the cam lobes and the lifters are lined up where they need to be. Um, on these engines with the flat tappets, you know, these are hydraulic lifters, but uh, some of you guys run solid lifters. I think the premise is the same. There's a small angle on the way that these camshaft lobes are ground. And the, when the uh, lifters are riding on it, it kind of wants to push it back. So, of course, you know, the cam's rolling on the timing gear setup, so there's going to be a lower gear, and it's going to want to pretty much run true where it's at. But it's not going to want to walk forward um, like some of the roller cams do. So anyways, we're going to grab my old timing gear. This is, uh, you know, not my new one. I don't have the new set yet, um, but I've got the old one, so this will suffice for today. We're going to just get this bolt started. We do not need to torque it. We just need to be able to, you know, rotate this cam around. So, let me get my tool. And we'll tighten this up. Just hold on to the gear a little bit here. Bring that down snug. Okay. And then that will allow us to have the cam riding right where it needs to be. Uh, timing gear up against the block, at least, you know, no further rearward than what you'd want. Okay, I've cleaned everything. I've cleaned uh, the, the lifter bores. I've cleaned off the lifters themselves. And we'll get started with the installation here. I guess for now, I'll leave the camera like this. And I have also gone through with a marker and put a little index mark on each one of these, okay? And we're going to set that up so it's facing up at, like, say, the 12 o'clock position. Um, you can use some light oil here. Uh, WD-40 is fine. Or just a drop of, you know, your braking oil, the oil that you're going to use when you're uh, getting it fired up for the first time. This is all going to come back apart and get cleaned. But the idea is you want a little bit of lubrication. But you don't want it so thick, like, you know, heavy oil like molasses, um, that they're not going to want to just you know, fall back to the cam like this under their own weight. So, uh, as you see, I'm going to put these in and they'll just drop right down to the cam under their own weight. I'm going to line that little black dot with basically 12 o'clock position. And that way we can, you know, watch these things, you know, hopefully uh, rotate in their bores. Okay, grab another one. When I'm all done, I'm going to actually number all of these as they come out and keep them in order so that they go right back in the same spot. That way we know that they worked good where they were tested. And of course,
course, the cam's gonna come out. It's gonna get fully lubed with that red line special lube. Um, actually, the cam might have even come with a special by Driven uh, cam lube. So we'll decide which of those we're going to use. I assume the one recommended by uh, the cam shaft manufacturer, which is also Hughes. All right, two more to go on this side. Let's get those dropped in there. Okay. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but when I put the cam in this time, you know, you got to be really careful. Just you bring it in really slow so you don't nick the cam bearings with the lobes. Those things are sharp as the devil. And I even put some tape. Uh, if you can see it, let me see right there on the gear on the cam that drives the distributor. I taped that thing up because, man, it's sharp like a cheese grater, and I did not want to. Uh, risk damaging even that front bearing um, so there you go a couple little tips at least what i did and it seemed to work quite well the main thing is the leverage you need that big bolt in the front or a handle to hold that thing and oh this right here is a little tool i made just to you know go in and, and help support the cam you can fish it in there and hold it up and you can kind of guide the back end as, as it's finding its uh spot on those bearings okay and other than that we're gonna set these lifters in here and then spin the cam around we're not gonna put the timing set on i mean this isn't cranking the engine over um so that it would you know rotate the cam sprocket we're just going to be spinning the cam itself okay it's actually a nice step to put it together and just see that the, the cam rotates smooth in the bearings. You don't have any nicks from when the bearings were installed, whether you did it yourself or whether the machine shop did it. Mine seems to be running really nice, so I'm happy with that. And get that one, and here goes the last one. Then I'll number these when I'm all done. Keep them in order in the box here or something. Come on. Last one. Okay. So they seem to be going smooth. You can see, I guess from this angle, right? You can see the little black marks. Okay, they're lined up pretty much with what I would say is 12 o'clock. And now we're going to rotate it over. I don't know how many turns we would need, but it says you can do it like up to 16. So we're just going to run it real slow. I'm going to start turning that sprocket over. Let's see what we get here. There's one, two. I don't want to go too fast. Three. I want to make sure that the those lifters are kind of just smoothly going down their bore. You hear a couple little taps as they come off of the lobe and to the base circle. Okay. And then if we have any that are not rotating, we'll come back and check them. And, you know, see if maybe we have just a little bit of lint in there or what we have going on but so far so good i see one on this side is not rotating quite as much as the others and this one here is a little slow to return might have just a little hair of dust in there or something but let's check it out so far so good all right, now if I zoom in a little bit, I think it's going to be obvious that those marks are all moving. They're moving at different rates, but the main thing is that they're all moving. Okay, and let's check the other side. Okay, yep, that one's there. Good. This one here was rotating uh, in like 12 turns, I think I did. It's about a quarter of the way around. I'm going to double check that one. 
And then this one as well. I'm going to take another look at that one, make sure it's good to go. They are all rotating, so I think we are in business. It's looking good. Just make sure that everything's kosher here on this one. It goes nice and smooth. Make sure there's no dirt on it. Using your smallest finger, you can probably get into the bore. Try to use a piece of the towel that doesn't have like a cut edge. You don't want to leave lint and stuff in there. It can help it. It'll obviously take up some of the clearance. Just another little bit of lube on this one. Make sure it's good to go. Okay, so you see there it's definitely falling nice. I can check the cam too, make sure it didn't get some lube on it from when I snaked it through the bearings. If it's all lubed up, it's not gonna have the friction it needs to spin it around during this check. Of course, during operation, there's valve spring pressure on these things pushing down, and they, they find their wear marks on that cam. And they'll continue to rotate even under pressure. Okay, another drop of oil on this guy. It's getting slippery. You don't want to drop it. Well, let me check that more. Looks good. Okay, it went down fast there. Let's go home. Okay, spin it around a little bit more and check it. Let me bring that uh, mark back to 12 o'clock on this one. So you can see that. Okay, and was it this one too? One of these two. I'll bring them both around. Okay, well, might as well do this one too. I could get my finger in there. Come on. It's a little tight at the back of the block here. A little less room to work. Okay. All right, let's see what we get here. Can we see good? Zoom in a little bit more. Okay, let's see if we get any rotation out of those four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Indeed, they are all rotating. Okay, I'm going to just make sure that this one here is clean. I see it, it does fall under its own weight, which is nice. But every once in a while when it came over the cam... It just looked like it was a little slow to return. Maybe the clearance in there is just a fraction less. I could rehone it, but I'm gonna fine tune that one and I think we're gonna be good to go. All right, well, that's all for now. Next time we come back, I'll be degreeing the cam. See ya.